Hello, and welcome to this Carbon Tracker video. My name is Piotr, and I'm part of the communications and events team here at Carbon Tracker. What follows is a short summary and presentation by Chris Moore, our senior EU power and utilities analyst in the corporate research team, covering the key issues and findings of two recent reports looking at Germany's coal exit through the lens of Uniper and RWE's transition plans. Both reports are available in the description below and also available on our website, carbontracker.org, where you can also access many additional features like slides and the newly released data portal. I highly encourage you also to subscribe to this video, this channel, and be sure never to miss out on future content that we upload here, including explainers, webinar summaries, and more. But now on to Chris. So on today's agenda, five points I'd like to raise. Um, the first one is that Germany cannot close coal today. It accounted for about 30% of output last year if it means the light's going off. So we first have to look at the whole question of security of supply. Uh, my second point is the gas bill that Germany is planning, does that solve the security of supply issue? And how does it square with decarbonization, particularly with, with respect to hydrogen? A third question on the agenda, how visible are RWE's scope one emissions reductions targets and how ambitious are UNIPA's scope three emissions reduction targets for 2030? Uh, my fourth point is about the renewables build and how realistic the renewables build targets are in view of energy policy uncertainty, cost pressures, and cash flow funding pressures uh, at present. And the fifth question is really the, the most provocative in some ways. Will RWE be an industry renewables leader by 2030 or with very few European utilities left with a combined pre continued presence in coal and lignite, will it instead be an industry outlier? So security of supply. Um, as you can see on the chart on the left-hand side, the planned closures for lignite and coal in Germany accounted for about, account for about 15% of capacity and nearly 30% of German generation output last year. Uh, Germany also closed nuclear last year, of course, and replacing coal will need gas, sufficient renewables, and grid capacity, and all on time. To meet power demand, and in particular, to balance intermittency from renewables, Estimates range between 20 and 40 gigawatts of a new gas build need. The announcement so far from the German government of 10 gigawatts, the tender announced in February, looks a little bit small in that context. And this is going to be hydrogen ready capacity. And we'll look a bit about that in the next slide. Um, Germany's renewables target of 100% uh, by 2035 uh, may potentially spell uh, asset stranding and import infrastructure overcapacity risk. One small example, uh, Augsburg, with a population of 300,000 in southern Germany, has recently announced plans to end gas for heating and told customers it will, it will cut off customers from the gas grid in future. The other question mark about the gas build is the capacity market and the risk of delay, with no likelihood of this being in place before 2028. I think it's important that RWE and UNIPA need to know what the form and the level of remuneration looks like before deciding whether to reconvert existing capacity, which is obviously faster, or to build new gas capacity, which will take longer. So to decarbonize, uh, so to, 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 to fill the, the, the gap in, in capacity, we need gas, which, which we've established. And on the top left here, um, I've shown you an artist impression of a hydrogen ready CCDT RWE vice filer. And this compares with the rather more photogenic shot on the cover sheet, uh, shot we had at the beginning of the, of the presentation. Um, RWE has a, a younger gas fleet and, and stronger balance sheet capacity than Uniper to build new German gas capacity. And there's a pipeline of 12 gigawatts uh, for this. Uniper, on the other hand, its fleet is nearly 26 years old. And we think to that extent, it should prioritize modernizing existing capacity and different markets have different solutions we think that germany probably uh, decarbonizing pika ccdt with hydrogen makes more sense um, and co-firing with hydrogen may be technically feasible from 2030 but we do need some fairly heroic assumptions about the cost of gas and co2 to make hydrogen competitive and elsewhere for example the uk and netherlands um, BEX, CCS might be a more viable option. 
The other point about hydrogen is that at the moment we don't have a network for this. You can see on the slide the plans to build a network and the EU recently approved 3 billion euros of government guarantees for loans to cover the initial losses for grid operators of hydrogen. And one last point on hydrogen, obviously there's some very, very big differences between Germany and the UK, but just recently in the UK, the National Infrastructure Commission suggested that hydrogen was not ready at scale for home heating and risk being an inefficient use of green capacity. So there are lots of questions about how we decarbonize the gas bill. So onto emissions targets. Um, with the presence in lignite, and that figure you can see of 467 at the top on the left-hand side for 2023, RWE's carbon intensity is well above the European average, and it hasn't moved very much since 2020. Now, in fairness, this partly reflects exceptional market conditions. And you can see top right, we had peak lignite emissions in 2021, 2022. The targets that RWE has for 2030 uh, are Paris aligned and look achievable. Uh, however, um, some of the peers do give a bit more information in, in this subject. In particular, ENBW has an interim emissions target for 2027, and UNIPA publishes quarterly emissions data. And we think that with 2030 still six years away, it would be really helpful if RWE did the same. If we look at the gas bill we discussed on the previous slide, and we look at the numbers here, it would imply that the gas bill still takes RWE and UNIPA to higher absolute emissions by 2030 than, by 20, than from 2023. You can see the 18.9 top right for the gas emissions last year. Obviously, 26.9 by 2030 would be higher than that. And to put this into context, RWE's scope one emissions are about three times higher than UNIPA. Its scope three emissions are about three to four times smaller. So RWE in some ways has an easier job to reduce emissions than, than its peer. But one last point on UNIPA, um, it has already cut its scope three emissions by 27% against a target of 35% by 2035. And to that extent, we think it should be more ambitious. So talking about renewables now, um, as you can see at the tops of the slide, the Easter package in Germany in 2022 has some fairly ambitious renewables targets. And RWE, to be fair, has accelerated its annual uh, renewables build rate nearly tenfold from 2020 to 2021. But its target in 2030 of 46 gigawatts is still quite a substantially smaller than some of the other companies like NL, EDF, Iberjola, and Engie. Most players have recently lowered or dra dropped their renewables capacity targets, and that reflects lower power prices, higher capital, and higher supply, supply chain cost issues, particularly in offshore wind. And additionally to that, of course, we've got uncertain energy policy with elections in France this weekend and in the States later this year. With respect to cash flows and the point about being cash negative, so my fourth bullet point in the slide, um, Unipa loses almost all of its coal EBITDA of 1.3 billion by 2026. And we would suggest that probably it needs acquisitions in any case to achieve critical mass in renewables. With respect to funding, um, RW is committed obviously to an investment grade for its credit rating. Um, but Fitch Ratings uh, uh, rates RW hybrids at the lowest level of investment grade, the triple B minus. And we would really ask the question that if our estimate of fossil fuel EBITDA is correct at around 2.4 billion, we would ask how much debt capacity is available for the non-fossil fuel EBITDA. And finally, on this point, Uniper's credit rating is based on government support as S&P continues to classify Uniper as a government rated entity. So coming to the coal exit, um, we quantify at the top of the slide, RWE's exposure to coal, 19% uh, of generation capacity, 28% of output last year. Uh, for comparison, Uniper was at 28% of capacity last year, 23% of output. So switching these numbers around. And you can see that it's a substantial part of the workforce as well. In terms of decommissioning, uh, Uniper has to sell its last German and Europe's newest coal plant at Dattelm near Berlin in 2026 as a condition of a German government bailout. And in both countries have, both companies have uh, hard coal capacity in Holland. The subsidies for biomass end here in 27, so we think there's a stronger case for closing Dutch coal before 2030 as well. And of course, hard coal's competitive position has been undermined recently by wicked gas prices and high procurement costs. 
Um, if we look at the case of an earlier coal exit, when RWE acquired Con Edison's clean energy business in October 22, it paid just over 11 times EBITDA. And equity funding was provided from Qatari Investment Authority at about half this multiple RWE. If you look at our research, you'll see that we have some carbon adjusted valuation metrics, and that gives some idea of the impact of coal and fossil fuels on historic enterprise value based multiples. Obviously, the role of government is very important, both at national and local level. Um, but my time in the civil service tells me that it should be RWE, not government, initiating this process. And government has had lots of issues of its own recently with the abortive uh, gas border ban last year and the constitutional court ruling um, that uh, the government had breached uh, spending rules last year. Um, so we think that RWE should start the process. I think that if we look elsewhere and where we might look at the industry by 2030, Uniper will have closed or sold German coal by 26, EMBW by 28. In Poland, PGE and Thoron on support moving coal to government by the end of 25. Chez is, is divesting its, its coal into assets in Poland. And in Greece, PPC will also exit Lignite by 26. So selling coal is not going to save the planet, but our work does suggest that decarbonizing coal at Uniper is happening faster because of government ownership. And we would suggest that RWE's lignite and coal assets would be better served in the same place. Uh, next slide, please, Hannah. So just finishing up quickly. So my, my management asks are here. We've kind of run through them already, so I'll just leave them there for a, a minute. But one point really to add, I suppose, in respect to what we talked about is um, if RWE can give us a sense of what they need from the regulation or from remuneration in order to help us to get a projected EBITDA yield on the CapEx, on flexible generation, and particularly hydrogen. Uh